Hello you absolute legends, welcome back to the channel, it's John here on a uh, windy but okay day here in Lincolnshire. Taking a look then today at this just purchased, uh, it is a Mark 1 Audi TT Coupe, 225 brake horsepower with the BAM engine, uh, if that means anything to yourself, covering quite a few miles actually to be honest with you 139,450 miles so nearly 140,000 and it's one that popped up on the old Facebook marketplace yesterday uh, I saw the colour if you haven't watched the channel already I already have one of these in this colour but the Roadster edition um, and it was very local to me I thought well I'm going to have to go and have a look at that aren't I so I did I went and had a look at it and uh, fixed a deal with the seller it's not perfect but it is a good starting point for a relatively usable everyday modern classic and um, I actually bought it for Mrs. John Coupland, it's for her to drive and enjoy. If you uh, remember a couple of months ago, I bought her a silver convertible. And, uh, well, she liked it, but didn't like it too much. Uh, in that she, she's not really a keen fan of the colour. So she hasn't actually driven it. So hopefully this one is something that she will enjoy some more. And you can see as we walk around the car, it's been modified. Um, it's had a few bits and pieces done to it, such as this uh, which looked terrible and it, but it's not um, been bastardized too much that I can't put it back to standard things that are um, a big key for me is original interior original paint uh, original wheels original ride height etc etc things like decals these decals on these sills not a major issue to me um, these horrible rear light tints are gonna go in a, we'll have a look at them in just a minute as we walk around the car but overall very good condition it's the 225 brake horsepower then that means you get xenon lights at the front and alien washers that's what they're called aliens um, no mud flaps on here but actually um, the wheel arches and sills looking good it has been painted in its life it has had work done to it this wing has been painted and the sills have been painted and this back panel has been painted as well. But no major issues, no major dints, knocks, or anything like that. There's a dint here on the bottom of this door, you can see. It's where someone's opened it on a, a curbstone or something, isn't it? That's something that I'm gonna to have to address. Um, and there's a scuff here on the sill here. See, that's where somebody has marked it, getting in and out, and they've just tidied it up. You'd never notice it if you didn't know it was there. Um, apart from that, looking good. Rear window has been tinted. Um, at the moment, I'm okay with it. I'm gonna leave it as it is. The uh, number plate has been changed. We've got this horrible sort of 4D gel number plate. That's horrible, it's going, getting rid of that. I think it's vile. Um, no honeycomb valance at the back because it's not a 3.2. Uh, the main thing is these horrible, horrible, horrible tinted lights. Um, it's just a film, so in theory, I should be able to heat that film up and just sort of peel them off. Uh, it's the, one of the first jobs I'm going to be doing. You can see it's just sort of peeling off there. So fingers crossed it's not stuck too bad. Um, yeah, and then get rid of these horrible things. This Quattro decal that someone's put on there. Horrible, vile. Same with this one here. I don't think it suits the car. Um, mechanically, it's okay. Um, the brake pedal travels a lot further than I want it to. There's an issue with that. I think the brakes need bleeding. Um, and the coolant bottle's looking a bit murky. We'll have a look at that in just a moment's time. But overall, outside, looking good. And the main thing for me is the electronics is looking good. Um, no issues. The, uh, the air conditioning seems to work fine. The radio all seems to work okay, as it should. Heated seats, ESP, etc., etc., and you can see 130, 39,426 miles. Being the coupe edition and not the roadster, you actually get four seats: one, two in the back there, and two here. Um, don't know whether or not I'd ever actually get another person, a human adult, in the back there, especially with me driving. You can see my driver's position. Well, you don't get any leg room. Um, things I've noticed here, this is broken. This flap uh, here, you can just see it covers the uh, covers the first aid kit that's broken. And then there's a CD changer the other side 
that's broken. Uh, again, just cosmetic, it's a piece of plastic, I can get that replaced and repaired. One thing I have noticed, and this is a bit naughty of the seller, is that they have removed the parcel shelf. Um, so I bought it yesterday, I left it with the seller, and there should be an Audi parcel shelf here that flops down and covers this gap um, when it's not in use. And he's removed that, which is a little bit naughty. I've rang him up, I've called him out about it, because I had the, hind the foresight to take photographs of the car before I, uh, when I left it. And it was there, I know it was there, I've called him out, He's admitted to removing it, um, so I'm going to go pack and get it. But in my opinion, that's quite ungentlemanly. Um, and under here, we've got a space saver wheel and the tool kit and some cable ties for some reason. Let's have a look what's in here. Take this out because I need to put the locking wheel tool away. Trim removal tool, all that sort of stuff, jack, etc. etc. Uh, that to me is the original space saver wheel and tie. It's nice to see that we've got the full toolkit as well um, in good nick and good condition in fact while we're here let's put that locking wheel nut tool uh, in there never seen inside of one of these they're, they're quite swanky there's the tool uh, i don't know what's that what that is in there some o-rings of some description there's the locking wheel nut tool and it sits just in there well, that's where it's going to sit. Might not necessarily sit in there always. Was it that way around? There it is. That's where it sits. Um, and then you can put this cover back on. Here, it's lots in place, and then this screws back in there. So yeah, as I say, a bit unsportsmanlike from the seller for that. I left the car with him in good faith with the keys um, to move to be able to move the car. Normally, what I would do is take the V5, take the keys. So at least if the seller disappeared, um, I could pick the car up. Um, and yeah, he's, uh, he's done me a bit dirty. So bad sportsmanship, not too happy, uh, especially because I've got to drive another sort of hour and a bit to go pick it up. Back seats fold down. They need a little bit of TLC, actually. They uh, don't fold down and lock in place perfectly, but I'm not going to be really using the rear seats. It's just for two, this. Um, and this is the original number plates. The Y742 SVS, so I've actually got them with the car in case I need them. Um, let's take a look under the engine bay then. Dee -dee -dee. Uh, we've got the original driver's map, by the way, not the original passenger's map. Again, that's gone missing. Um, I can't prove that it's gone missing overnight, sadly, because I uh, didn't photograph the driver's, sorry, the passenger's footwell. Um, he might have gone missing overnight. I'm not too bothered. Under the engine bay then, it's quite warm and I have no idea, no idea why that's there. It looks tosh. Um, I'll be taking that off this afternoon. Um, overall, mechanically good. It's had uh, sort of some forge uh, motorsport valve stuff fitted here and a dump valve as well, which is quite nice. Gives you a nice whoosh of air when you um, put your foot down on the turbo. But yeah, the coolant is looking a little bit gold and murky whether it's not had some sort of engine seal in the past or something similar um, I haven't seen any coolant heating engine problems so it could be that, that, that that's been addressed in the past but I think one of my jobs is to take the coolant bottle out flush it and flush all the coolant system apart from that apart from a general tidy up cleaning of all the lights and you know uh, back to blacking all the grills and bits and pieces not a bad looking thing and uh, we'll, we'll be documenting what we do uh, throughout the life of the car on the channel. Right, let's shut that. Okay. Um, aside from that, looking in the passenger's rear this side. Oh, I've noticed that this seat belt doesn't retract properly. Um, which I've got absolutely no idea why. I think it just needs to be at the right sort of angle of dangle. Um, but that's something obviously we need to address. Else you're going to be shutting your seat belt in the... Uh, in the door and actually mrs john Cooper brought that to my attention just a moment ago uh, mercedes benz uh, in fact do you know what let's take that off now that's terrible isn't it let's just rip that off if i can do it one-handed i can't do it one-handed yeah that, there's only one place for that and that's over there get rid of that terrible that's probably not helped by that situation either these seat belts seem to be sort of facing the wrong way a little bit and have got a twist in them but we'll have a look at that at a later date apart from that cd changer in the back here this 
flap, as I say, the clip's broken. Uh, that's not a major issue. I can either um, ping that down or get some new um, some new clips in there. And actually, I've noticed that the rear speakers don't work, um, which they should do, shouldn't they? These are the rear speakers behind here, so um, we'll have to have a look at that as well. All in all, not bad. What did I pay for it? Well, just shy of £2,000 is the honest answer. Uh, have I paid a little bit too much? Mm, no, I don't think so. It's really rare in this Merlin purple. The wheels are in good nick. Um, and overall, a well-looked-after car. Um, some people would have probably told me to steer clear of it, having the tints and the wraps and all this sort of nonsense. Um, it hasn't put me off. Am I going to take the tints off? Well... Maybe, I'll probably have a peel of the tints at some point. But I'm not, um, not overly bothered by the rear window tints. These, though, are the next to go. Let me know, what do you think? What would you do? Uh, would you leave them horrible rear tints on, or would you have them straight off like me? If you've enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up if you wouldn't mind. Uh, and a like and a subscribe if you haven't already done so. The next time you see it, hopefully you'll, look, you'll be looking a little bit more shinier, a little bit nicer, a little bit better, a little bit tidier in certain places and when I've got rid of some of this nonsense <laughs> have a great day whatever you're getting up to take care and goodbye